In this tutorial, we are going to cover how to set conditional formatting rules in a Google Sheet tab with existing conditional formatting rules so that the existing ones aren't removed and the new one is added in. Oh, blimey! So I have four main test conditions that I want to meet with this Google Apps Script. First one being that there are no rules that I have to worry about. So the new conditional formatting rules will be implemented into this first range here. In the second example, there is a conditional formatting rule and we don't want to override the existing rule. We just want to append that rule to the end. Now, in our next example, you want to do the opposite here where we want to override the current rule within our selected range here while maintaining the existing rule. So it needs to go in front of or above in the rules array. And in our last rule, we want to put it between two. So we want to have it after this rule but before this rule where the twos are highlighted in red here let's just select all so you can see the conditional formatting rules and have a quick look and as you can see here we've got these specific ranges where a cell isn't empty then that conditional formatting range will be highlighted in this green here and then in our last example this example four here we have two positions the first of which is again where the range from a33 to l 36 is highlighted in this green if it is not empty or this condition here where a32 to a l38 where the number two is highlighted in text as red so we want to overwrite this one but not overwrite the other one so that our example will look a little bit like this okay so you can see in this first example it's completely covered in the next example the original one stays as the primary rule and then the rule that we added comes in afterwards in this example, we want the we want to overwrite this primary rule. And then in our last example, we don't want to overwrite this first green rule, but we do end up overwriting where the number two is highlighted as red text. Okay, cool. So let's dive in. We're going to start our work based on a starter sheet. And if you want to play along, and I encourage that you do, there is a copy of the starter sheet in the link in the description below. Make a copy of that, open it up and go into extensions, app scripts, and inside the app scripts, you will see the starter sheet that looks like this. There'll be two files. One is a code.js file, which will look like this. This is where we'll be doing our work. And then there is a test file here, which will run our tests to check to make sure our work was accurate. Let's quickly look at this rule we're building and then we'll go back to our tests and then we'll start our clicky clacky. What are we building? So we've got this conditional formatting set rule here and it's going to require a Google Sheet, Sheet tab, and then rules and then positions. Now, as you can see in the example here, if we move these around, the position order will change as well. So if I move this above here, you can see that two, that the two red takes priority over this green. So that tells us that these conditional formatting rules are in an array where the first or zeroth rule in the array has order of priority over the other arrays after it. So we need to figure out the position in that array that we want to set it set this in. So Building conditional formatting rules take a number of different types of rules as well. So if we want to add another rule, we have these format rule sets that we want to identify. Now we don't need to reinvent this. This is already provided by Google. So what we're just going to do is create this conditional formatting rule builder that allow us to maintain the existing rules while adding in this new rule. So our second parameter is going to be the rules that we build in as an array of conditional formatting rules. So you can see here, spreadsheet app conditional formatting rule as an array. And then we are going to also add an optional position. So we can leave this blank as indicated by these square brackets here for the name of the position, or we can add a value. So if it's a positive value, it's going to be a positive number in the position, wherever we want this in the order of the array of conditional formatting rules. If it's a neg negative number, it means it's going to start from the end of the conditional formatting rule array and move back up. Okay, so with this in mind, let's head over to our tests. So in our test, we have our four main tests and they correspond to each one of these tests along here. And first we grab our spreadsheet and that's going to just be the spreadsheet, active spreadsheet. So this entire spreadsheet, then we're going to grab the sheet by its name, which is test four. Yep, correct. And then with conditional formatting, we need to create a rule with the new conditional formatting rule builder. 
So we set a new conditional formatting rule, basically just creates an object of conditional formatting rules for us to then add into the uh, conditional formatting rule set. So each of our rules are going to be identical. The only thing we're gonna change is the range and the position of those rules. So what we're going to do for our first rule is uh, when the text equals one, we're going to get a orange color in it here. So I'll just drag this back across here. So we're gonna have this orange color. When the text is equal to two, it's going to have this purple color here, as you can see in the example. When we make our first rule in this first test range here, all we're going to do is grab that rule and then we're going to set the range to the new selected range. So where's that range coming from? Well, we set the sheet get range here and then we're going to build that conditional formatting rule. And then we're going to do the same for our second rule here where the range will be identical for both rule one and rule two. After that, we are going to call our conditional formatting set rules function that we will build in a moment. And that will then create the conditional formatting rule. Let's have a look at the variations for our function calls. The only significant change that we're going to make apart from the range is going to be the position here. So in our second test, we want to change the position where we are ensuring that the position is at the end. So we can use this minus one to indicate that we want to make sure that this rule goes to the, to the bottom of the rule set. So that will allow for this rule to override our rules that we're going to add in here. In our second example, we want to make sure that the rule that we're about to build has priority over all other rules. So we're going to bring that to the very top of the rule set. Now, keep in mind, rule sets are based on the sheet tab itself, not on the range. So they're going to go all the way up to the very top of the rules in that sheet tab. While keeping this in mind, our fourth example, we want to be able to, in this last example, add the rule after this green set, but before the red set. So it overrides the number two here, but doesn't override the green. So essentially this is what's going to happen here if we have a look. So we want to go up, we'll need to go up six sets of rules to get past this because we've got this A3, uh, L8, which will just depend to the end here. And the same with those two color sets. And then our text is exactly one for this A14, which is here, this one here. And that'll also be appended to the end because that's minus one by default. Uh, if we don't have that last argument, it'll be minus one. So then we'll have to get past one, two, three, four, five, and our six rules are going to be the ones we're going to get into. So we have to go back minus six to figure that out. So when building these rules, it always takes a fair bit of planning to figure out where you want to position things in your rule set. Okay, I think that's enough jibber jabber. Let's get on to some clicky clacky. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get the original conditioning formatting rules in the sheet. So let's go let new rules. This will change, and but it'll currently contain the sheet dot get conditional formatting rules method here. And this method just grabs all the conditional formatting rules in the current sheet tab. All right, so we also need to get the length of the rules because we don't want this position to be greater than the length of the rule set. We'll make a constant variable here. That's one that doesn't change. So const rule length is going to be equal to new rules dot length. Okay, so now we will create a variable, a let variable, one that changes called pause for position is equal to, and we'll just set it as minus one for now. because so that'll be our fault position, minus one. Okay. So we've got two primary conditions that we need to handle for first. One is where we want to put in our new rule based on the last value. So we want to start from the bottom and go up with our negative values. So you can see here, or we want to start with positive values and go down a N number in the rule array to position that. So here we're going to say if position is greater than minus one, you could say greater than or equal to zero, up to you. And then we'll put in a note here. If the positive position start from zero and move up the length of the array. So we want to say then if the position is also greater than the rule length, 
then we've got a bit of a problem. We can't add it in. It's greater than the length. So we just want to set that position to equal the rule length. So we'll just append it onto the bottom. However, if it isn't, we want to set the position to equal position. Nice. Okay, so now we've got a handle for these negative positions. That's the ones where we're going to try and put the rule from the bottom up instead of the top down. Here we'll say else. And then we'll put in our little note here. And we want to create a negative position here. So we're going to do all the, the calculation for the user or the developer instead of them having to worry about it. So we're going to tra transform this negative position into a positive one. And we do that by saying const pos negative is equal to, and it's going to be the rule length plus the position, which will be a negative position in this case. So it'd be rule length minus plus minus, and then we'll add one to it. And that'll actually get the position from the top down instead of the bottom up. But mentally it's easier for you to see from the bottom up using that negative value. Okay. And why don't we just put in a little test console log here to say position was neg. And then we'll say if the position or the negative position pos neg is less than zero after we do that little calculation, then the position will be zero. Otherwise, the position will equal the pos negative position. Oh, nerf. Neg. There it is there. Okay, so that's our if else statement. We've set up our position. So this is the bit, it's the hardest part of the whole job. We've nearly completed. Now we need to add our new set of rules to our rules. So we'll say new rules. Now remember, new rules currently contain the existing conditional formatting rules. And we're going to use the splice method here, JavaScript splice method. And we're going to add in the position. And we will say, uh, we don't want to remove anything. So no de delete count. And then we're going to use the spread operator here, dot, 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 and add in our rules. Okay. And let's just add in a console log just to, to declare the current position. Uh, POS is going to be pause. What else do we want to see? Maybe the current length and the new rules length here. Yeah, we'll probably delete this out afterwards. So we could say uh, uh, length would have been equal to just this plus the length, right? So we'll just copy that dot length. Uh, definitely need to delete this before we put this into production though. We don't want to slow things down. And we could duplicate this row, uh, shift alt down arrow. And we could say new length. So our new length is going to be the new rules length. Cool. And then the very last thing we need to do is to add our, the existing conditional formatting rules and the new rules were added back into the sheet. So we'll call sheet dot set conditional formatting rules. And our argument is our new rules. Hit save. Let's head over to our test. And we're making sure here we've got everything selected so we can see the magic unfold here as well as here. And, but it's not mandatory to do this. But let's hit uh, run. Awesome. Looks like we've had some success here. So we've got two, so our positions... So we've set our positions here. Excellent. That's great. And then also we've got our current length and new length. Okay, so that's it for setting conditional formatting rules in a Google Sheet tab that already has existing conditional formatting rules and positioning them in a way that you want to see the rule. You can do a lot more with this by removing existing rules before you add in the new ones. So you might want to cut out a certain part of the existing rule set, perhaps uh, this one before adding it in. And I've covered how to remove portions of conditional formatting rules within a sheet tab, three previous tutorials.
in our next tutorial, I'll put everything together in one class. And all you will have to do is then make a call on the class to either remove rules how you'd like them or set rules how you'd like them. So hit that notification bell for when that tutorial comes out. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.